put power to this and have your glycol fluid or if you're going to do a, a dry test with straight water okay um, as long as you have fluid in there um, before you uh, bump the uh, bump the main compressor so the thing about the Copeland scroll compressors on these chill kings is they're fairly quiet even if you have the phase rotation wrong if you're going to try to do it without a licensed um, HVAC guy, guy here without gauges uh, you can turn the unit on until the compressor comes on uh, for maybe three or four seconds. Listen to that compressor noise, okay? Uh, then regardless, uh, disconnect your main incoming power and switch any one of those two power leads there and turn the unit on again until the compressor comes on and see if it's running the quieter of the two. Uh, because the Chill Kings, even when they're running backwards, they're actually pretty quiet even when running backwards, which is dangerous to run backwards for any given amount of time. So if you're gonna try to do it by yourself, do it in two different scenarios quickly, uh, and then just keep it at the one which runs the runs the coldest. This timer here, okay, this is uh, actually a delay on make timer that's hooked up to this little glycol level alarm. This will be wired in when we ship it ship it out. Okay, right now you probably have the tank at 80% full capacity. Um, so there's a um, a level switch that goes to your tank, which is up high. It's just behind the tape there. Um, so when the glycol level gets too low, which you don't want, um, it's going to send a signal to this delay timer here. And the reason you'd have that delay is we don't want it chattering on and off. We want to make sure you know we want to make sure if it's it's going to go on when it's truly truly too low. Then you'll hear this audible. Um, uh, audible and it's also a visual alarm too if you want to wanted to remount it and then we just have our basic uh, our basic on off switch here once you get this set up uh, you're going to leave the glycol pump running virtually virtually all the time when you do bring power to the unit before you do anything uh, let the even when that toggle switch is off that heater band there for the crankcase heater that's going to start keeping the compressor warm you want to keep that, uh, um, have power to the unit for at least 12 hours, maybe more, before you try to start the unit up. That keeps the refrigerant um, in, the, in a desired state, not, not too cold. You don't want to start the unit up unless that heater band's been on for a while. And again, that heater band is on uh, as long as there's power to the unit. Uh, the units have a, a pretty impressive single phase, one horsepower pump here. Um, when we uh, get these ready for a... Uh, uh, low temperature application we insulate the pump we insulate that line and what also we have here uh, as you can see this is the suction side drawing drawing off your tank here this outputs out to your process and we also have a fixed bypass line here that little fixed bypass line is so if you have any major restrictions out in your process be it the tanks um, or if you shut off all your valves, and which would be a peculiar case, it just protects the pump. So we're always going to have some type of flow in the centrifugal pump coming back up to the top of the tank. And that, in addition to the return that comes back into the tank up here, okay, uh, those two things create kind of almost like a jacuzzi whirlpool effect for the heat exchanger coil that's within the tank. One of the biggest things we have on startup is some, um, the, a pump likes to have some back pressure to be in its, uh, its happy range as far as amp draw goes. Uh, one of the biggest things we see is if somebody do, first does the startup and there's not enough restriction in the lines, for example, they can maybe a shut off being partially closed for a test, is that there's not enough restriction in the lines and the pump over amps. So it's kind of contrary to what common sense initial thinking would be if the pump uh, has no load on it the, pump, the centrifugal pump spins too quickly and it will over amp so if you take a look at the uh, the amp ratings here on the pump maximum load amps 14.8 7.4 it's the second one 7.4 is the uh, amp draw it wants to do at uh, two, 230 volt single phase um, they can be happy up, uh, you know, a few, amp, a few tenths of an amp above that 7.4, but 
but if it gets much higher than that, and you can very easily check it on these two, the two power lines here, if it gets much higher than that, that's when the unit will start, uh, the pump will start overheating, and it has internal, internal thermal overload. You don't need to mess with these switches here, but these are the high and low safety pressure switches. The only one which ultimately might need to be tweaked in the field someday is the one labeled fan. That's your fan switching um, on and off for your, to achieve your uh, low ambient. And this is an outdoor rated unit, and I think we mentioned before, uh, it's ETL approved and Intertech approved uh, by default that meets the uh, meets the Canada <coughs> the Canada standards. Uh, so what else can we say? You're gonna have uh, we have one inch on your output, one and a quarter inch on your return. Uh, depending what's how many tanks and how big, that's probably what you want for your supply and your return. Um, the Chill King unit, one of the nice things about it is with our coil exchanger submerged in that tank and we re-insulated that tank with extra insulation for a glycol application by the way. One of the nice things is that coil submerged in that tank is unlike a, uh, it's unlike a braze plate heat exchanger, it's not consuming pressure, it doesn't need return pressure coming back through all the plates of the braze plate heat exchanger. That allows us and affords us to use a slightly smaller pump than otherwise would be needed for a chiller which uses a brace plate exchanger. What we're going to do right now, um, just while we were talking, we got the temperature back up, back up to 30. I'm going to change, just so you can see the compressor, hear the compressor run. I'm going to change the differential. Set, 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 set. I'm going to change the differential to one. Okay, set again. So we're starting to cool. The set point's at 27 still. I just changed the differential to one. So that means it's gonna chill down to 27 and then it's going to chill back up to 28 before it turns on again. Again, you like to have, uh, you wanna get away with the biggest differential of your process. Uh, can accommodate or withstand. The reason for that is the reason for that is that minimizes the amount of starts and stops on the compressor. There's obviously a limit to how warm you want the temperature of the glycol to go. Uh, but I mean, if you can get away at five, six, or seven, that's great. Um, but with that controller, you can go down as low as one, just like I did. Um, this here. That's where your uh, glycol level float switch is, by the way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, we've already put this on a custom skid with a, a plywood bottom. It's going to be uh, braced down, a little bit of padding, full crate, and then we actually usually shrink wrap the sides of the crate also. Obviously this is just all our hardware here. Uh, throw the covers off. We're gonna brace the, uh, or wrap the sides of the crate also, just to keep it tight there in shipping, even though it's gonna be screwed, all screwed into place. So it's gonna ship with a full charge of our 410A. What else can we say? This here, this here is the uh, top band, which holds the top cover of, of the tank on. Most folks we find it's easier if we take this vent here and uh, put on, uh, this goes right to the top of the tank, put on some type of, use some type of um, uh, little uh, utility pump and some rubber hose over this vent, and it's easier for you to load it, uh, load the um, fly call in that way. When we go through a unit like this, we take this whole top cover off to get in there and clean and inspect the tank. But uh, with this, uh, with this fly call level alarm here, um, you're gonna know you're gonna know when the tank is uh, when the tank is full. With the fan switching, the um, the unit will come on and off, uh, uh, not necessarily time with the compressor. So the compressor can be on, uh, but the fan's gonna be on based on uh, based on pressure. So there are other chillers when the compressor is on, the fan is on all the time. That's not the case with the, uh, the Chill King with the low ambient option.
The unit's going to ship just with our, uh, our fittings off here. I'm going to take off the fittings here for our test loop. Uh, so we're just going to ship it out here with uh, one inch female NPT incoming. I'm sorry, one inch female NPT outgoing. One and a quarter inch NPT on the end. So with the with the 50 gallons of uh, 50 or 55 gallons of glycol we have in here, it takes a little while for us to start uh, start seeing that temperature temperature dropping. We've got the tank up to 31 or so, just while we were starting to um, start the video here. What you want to see also here is next to our suction line filter dryer, that's your refrigerant sight glass. Notice the green color for the center dot. That's nice, the system's dry. And you don't see any flashing or, or foaming. Okay, so we started, we're starting to chill down. Back down, we're back down to about, uh, back down to about 30. So it's going to take a little while to get back down to that 26 or 27. 